Howdy folks, 4th Armory here again. We've had some questions come in from some folks wanting to know uh, what happens to the ball while it's being rolled. What are the changes in size? Uh, is there any change in weight? Um, you know, there, people are concerned that maybe it's getting worn down. Uh, of course, this is a mechanical device and um, any mechanical device, of course, has friction and of course there's going to be some wear on the ball. But the whole idea behind this device and the old way of doing it when you roll the, the ball between two files is you're not actually filing the ball. You're not physically removing material from the ball. The, the idea is you're rolling it between two rough surfaces and so instead of removing material, you're, you're embossing that rough shape into the surface of the ball. And of course, just by rolling it around, it also helps obliterate the, split, the sprue. But um, you're not really trying to remove material. Of course, like I said, it is a mechanical device. There is friction. There is going to be some uh, lead dust produced, and there is somewhere on the ball. But what you're going to find is there's not an appreciable loss of weight, and the ball diameter actually increases in size very slightly because that displaced material has to go somewhere. So when you have the teeth bite into the ball, it's just like um, squeezing Play-Doh in your hand. That Play-Doh has to go somewhere. The amount of Play-Doh hasn't changed. It just has to go somewhere. And so it squirts between your fingers. Well, same idea when you're rolling it between two files. That material squirts into, into the spaces between the teeth. And same thing with our device here. So shouldn't be any appreciable loss of, of material or change of weight and um, a slight increase in size, about five to, five to 10 thousandths maybe. So let's take a look and see. So we've got our RCBS Chargemaster 1500 scale here, and uh, we'll, we'll do some tests on, on weight first. Uh, and this, this is the wheel weight. So this is stuff that I'm uh, casting out a wheel weight, which is what I shoot in competition. So we'll try the wheel weight ones first. Well, I guess before we stick it in the machine, let's weigh it. <clears throat> So 454.9 grains, so almost 455. All right, there's our round ball. Let's see how much it weighs. 454.7. So it's 0.2 grains lighter than it was. So that's how much material we've lost. So let's, let's keep doing that and see if that's about consistent. Four fifty-two point seven. So in this case, zero weight loss. All right. Let's try another wheel weight one here. Four fifty-three point five point four. Four fifty-three. I can't make up its mind. So we'll say four fifty-three point five. out of the machine. Four fifty three point four. So point one I guess it was. Uh, I forget what it was. But <clears throat> you can see here that we're not losing much material and that's not surprising. The the machine if you you know can't I don't want to take this out, but if you were looking down in here, you know there's no there's no lead or anything in here. So it's it's really not supposed to be removing material from the ball. It's all mechanical displacement. All right, so let's try another one here. Wheel weight. 450.8. There we go. 
see a little bit of the where the sprue was there. 450.6 so again 0.2 grains so there might be a very small amount you know of, of uh, material removal 0 0.1 0 0.2 grains but certainly nothing that's going to affect your your accuracy and uh, it, it's consistent of course you know it'll be consistent across all your balls so you know if the weight was a critical factor you'd weigh them and do your discarding of your your flyers um, after processing them Personally, I don't bother. I don't weigh round balls at all. So I do with my um, rifled guns, but not with the smoothbore stuff. All right, <clears throat> so that's that. So now we've got some lead ones. So let's try lead, pure lead, and see how that does. I don't have very many of them because I don't shoot pure lead. I shoot the wheel weights, which is why I got a whole bottle of them. But we'll try. I, I cast up some pure lead ones, so we'll see how they do. And as expected, they're a little bit heavier. So 467.2. There's the ball. And 466.9. So about 0.3 grains, I guess. Got another lead one here, pure lead. And of course, when you're using pure lead, <clears throat> you want to make sure you don't, oh, it just takes a light touch when you're doing pure lead, otherwise, you'll roll these things out around. You'll turn them into little sausages instead of round balls. So, but uh, there's another lead one. And I don't remember, I don't remember if I even weighed it when we got started there. Anyway, 467.1, and whatever it was to start out with there. So, there's that one. <clears throat> and I've got a couple other ones in here, but uh, I've, I've already roughened them up, so I can't show you a before and after, but, you know, 453.53, 467.8, 466.8, that other one might be a wheel weight lead for 450 grains, 467.1, and 467.1, yeah one of these guys in here is a wheel weight, nope not him. Well, anyway, one of those guys is so light, it's, it's probably not a pure lead alloy. But anyway, <clears throat> you can see there's not much difference in weight after you're done processing them. So now, let's take a look at the change in diameter. <clears throat> Alright, so here's a wheel weight ball uh, as cast. And we'll take a, a measurement of it here. And I'm getting about 0.680. And this is a, a RCBS mold, uh, 0.678 is the, is the mold diameter itself. So 680. So that's about what we're getting across the sprue, across the parting line, is about a 0.680 diameter ball. So 0.680. So let's process it. Okay, there's the processed bullet. You can see where the sprue was there. Okay. So 0.689. So it grew about nine thousandths. 0.6835. So about four thousandths increase. 0.6855. About six thousandths. 687. So about seven thousandths. So what I typically see is about a five to ten thousandths increase in diameter. And again, that's because of material displacement. It's just like squeezing some Play-Doh in your hands. That Play-Doh, you're not changing the amount of Play-Doh, it just has to go somewhere. So it squirts in between your fingers. Same thing with this device or rolling it between two files. That material has to go somewhere, so it squirts 
where it has to go and that results in a slightly larger diameter. So the main thing this thing does for you, again, <clears throat> the whole reason I'm, why I'm bothering to do this is the way I shoot my balls in competition is I dip them in Lee A locks. I actually use a, a competitor product called X locks that's much cheaper, same stuff. All right, so I, I double dip them. I dip them once and let them dry and I dip them again and let them dry. And, and I shoot them just like this. Now, the, what the texture does and what it did even when I used files before I invented this device was if you try to coat a cast round ball with the Lee A-Locks, what you find is that smooth surface, the A-Locks just peels off. And so when you're trying to prepare your cartridges and you're putting the balls into your plastic tubes, you're, you're watching the lube flake off in patches. And when you're trying to load it, you'll, well, when you take it out of the tube, more lube flakes off. And when you put it down the barrel, some lube flakes off. So you end up with a ball that's got patches of lube on it. So not only are you not getting full coverage of the lube, but also you're getting inconsistent coverage, which can affect your accuracy when you've got patches of stuff hanging on it in different places. So what the roughing allows you to do is it, it doesn't peel off anymore. See, I can scrape this with my finger and you can see I can, I can see the lead underneath, but I'm not removing chunks of the, of the lube. And so it stays on the ball, which is what you want. The other thing that the, the increased diameter does for you is it gives you a, a, a snug fit in the, bore, in the bore of your gun, but not an impossible to load fit in the bore of your gun. Because all these little bumps, it's lead, it's soft, all these little bumps can deform. So if you get a tight spot in your barrel, like you get some fouling on there, say, well, you know, a few taps of the ramrod and those little bumps are going to shear away and, and, and deform and you can still load. So it, it, it kind of gives you, between the bumps and the lube, it gives you a, um, a sticky patch effect, basically. And in the North-South Skirmish Association, they don't allow you to use uh, paper or cloth patches with your round ball. So this is a way to get yourself a, a snugger fit uh, and, and, and have the benefits of a snug fit in the bore without having a patch. Now, some people, the NSSA does allow you to use aluminum foil for a patch, and some people do that, and they do it with pretty good success also. Of course, <laughs> not everyone advocates for using a tight fit in the bore either. I do, but I know people who deliberately size about 15 thousandths undersize and they still get fantastic accuracy. So there's lots of ways to skin a cat, and uh, this is just the way I do it. I've been shooting smoothbore about four years now, and uh, I used to use my file as I showed in the other video, but this is just a whole lot faster. So this is the way I shoot in competition. It earns me medals. Certainly not the only way to do it, but uh, if you're interested in, in this sort of thing, check us out on the web www.forth-armory.com. Thanks a lot.